I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And here to give the invocation this morning is Dr. Gordon. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's a good day to be out and a good day just to go into the presence of the Lord. Shall we pray, please? Father, we give you thanks and praise today, and we honor you, and we glorify you. Thank you for this opportunity just to be able to come together and to be able to look and discuss matters pertaining to you. We ask for your strength and for your wisdom, for the mayor, and also for all those who would lead in government. We ask for your presence to be with us today. We ask for your presence in Port St. Lucie, in the various business endeavors that individuals would experience your blessings and your grace and your mercy. We thank you again, Lord, and ask for your blessings again upon these proceedings. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. At this time, I will ask everyone to please put your cell phone either on mute or silent so people who are recording this doesn't get that. Good morning, federal city council members, city manager Jeff Bremer, distinguished guests, community leaders, and fellow citizens. I'm happy to be here today to update you on the state of the great city of Port St. Lucie, which continues to be an awesome place to live, to work, and to spend time enjoying the beauty of our environment. I know everyone here agrees with me that this is a fantastic city. Everywhere I go, everywhere I spend time with and meet people, that is what I hear. It is very rewarding to me to feel the sense of connection with my neighbors, my colleagues, and the people of our business community. Despite any differences we may have, we all love our community and are dedicated to its future. And most people understand the long-term interest of Port St. Lucie are more important than our individual self-interest. That's why we are continuing to create, create great quality infrastructure, grow local businesses, protect our natural environment, and improve the effectiveness of government at City Hall. I'm happy to report that we continue moving toward our common goals this past year. That doesn't mean there are not challenges to be faced, but it does mean that our city council has a unified view of what our city should be. And many of the community leaders have told me that they support our long-term vision. A major step toward implementing our unified vision was accomplished in 2013 with the creation of a strategic plan. It will be used to keep our focus on the most important issues we face. Our strategic plan was created through a series of meetings, brainstorming exercises with the council, city manager, department heads, and expert staff members. And it was guided by a consultant who has helped cities all over the country. The plan identifies Port St. Lucie as the heart of the Treasure Coast, with major activity centers in St. Lucie West, in Tradition, and City Center, and the key places along St. Lucie River by 2028. It envisions the city offering stable neighborhoods with quality housing choices, a diverse local economy, easy mobility, and leisure opportunities for an active lifestyle. Other priorities include showcasing Port St. Lucie's natural beauty by improving the St. Lucie River Walk Boardwalk and creating a plan for McCarty Ranch. The ranch will become an environmentally friendly recreational area in addition to a water storage and treatment facility to meet water demands for decades to come. By stating our policies and gold explicitly in the strategic plan, we at City Hall see clearly what we have in common and what the future of our city can be if we stay focused, work hard, and work together. And if anybody tells you our council does not have unified vision, please remind them that we have voted unanimously 95% of the time. As I mentioned, we all want what's best for the city, even if we disagree on how to achieve some of the goals. With that said, Many good things are happening, so here's some good news. We just learned on June 1st that our property values are up 5.25% for 2013. This is great news. 
This is great news because it is the second time in a year that we have seen growth and it tells us that confidence in our city is on the rise and people are willing to invest here again. Annual property value increases of 40 to 44 percent like we saw 10 years ago are not sustainable. And we have learned hard that the slower but steady increases are much better for our community. Our crime rate fell by 19% in 2013 after falling nearly 20% in 2012. Again, we have the distinction of having the lowest crime rate for any Florida city with a population over 100,000 people. That means a lot. In May, in May, the travel-related website, DestinationSeekers.com, rated us as the best place to live in Florida. In March, Port St. Lucie was ranked 13th best city to start a business by an online, online social network about personal finances. Forbes recently ranked the city as one of the 25 best places to retire and one of the 200 best places for businesses and careers. A national online real estate brokerage rated us number one on the list of 10 best places to live in Florida. An Allstate insurance company ranked us recently as one of the 50th safest city for driving in the U.S. Only one other Florida city made the list. Also, in the last couple of years, CNNMoney.com reported that the American Lung Association said that Port St. Lucie area is one of the top five in the country for cleanest air. Two years ago, the U.S. Census Bureau said we had the national highest home ownership rate with 76% of houses occupied by owners. In 2013, we moved up to 78%. We are well above the national average of 65%. This means that we lead the nation in the percentage of residents who are financially invested in our hometown. That really says something good about our community. The Census Bureau also says we added about 2,000 leisure and hospitality related jobs since January of 2010, and about 2,100 jobs in ed education and health services. And how's this for good news? The unemployment in Port St. Lucie has dropped 7.2% after reaching a high of 14% in August of 2010. <laughs> Applications for building permits are up substantially. For, from January through May this year, we issued 8,500 permits. That is 68% increase from a low we hit in 2009. In May, there were almost 1,900 applications for permits. It was the most in seven years, and it is a reflection of an increased economic activity. These numbers are great news for the construction trades and the real estate industry. And according to the Florida Realtors, the average sale price for a single family home in our area is up 12% from a year ago, and it's selling in 63 days down from 83 last year. Sale tax continue to be on the rise, 8% from last year, and our fees we receive from FPNL are increasingly as well. Does anyone say a pattern here of the positive news? And here's a new fact we just learned since we started the single stream recycling program on May. Recycling is up 60% throughout the city. People here really do care about our environment. The city recently was awarded a federal grant of about 300,000 for s sidewalks and construction. And the council agreed to spend another $800,000 this year to add more sidewalks near schools and bus stops. Our police department was reaccredited this past year, and so was our public works department. These reaccreditations provide confirmation that we're doing a great job. And our fi finance department and the Office of Management and Budget 
were awarded for excellence by National Association, which has recognized the city for more than 20 consecutive years. You've got to give them a round of applause. <laughs> These awards tell us we're doing a great job for accounting for the public's money. In 2013, we sold the Rasa Police substation to St. Lucie County, helping to alleviate the financial burden, avoid a potential eyesore, and gain a new library for our residents to enjoy. Bass Pro opened, providing hundreds of jobs and retail destinations from, from people from 100 miles in every direction. Tesla Motors opened an electric vehicle charging station which shows that we have caught the attention of some of the world's most innovative entrepreneurs. Our city hosted an historic Holocaust memorial event, reminding us of the value of our diversity and earning praises from the internationally respected Simon Wesenthal Center. We created new public events that enhance our quality of life when we held our first ever lunch fest at City Hall and our new River Night event showcasing the beautiful St. Lucie River. I do want to compliment Councilman uh, Michelle Berger for the River Walk and Councilman Ron Bowen for his lunch fest. Thank you. <laughs> and also Vice Mayor Bart for the Holocaust. Thank you. Our festivals and parades drew more people than ever this past year, and many residents came out to exercise with America's most popular fitness guru, Richard Simmons. That's a day I'll never forget because he actually came on to Councilman Ron Bowen. It was exciting. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> the, oh, you forgot, huh? Those special moments do a lot to help people feel good about where they live. We're not just about building roads and utilities anymore. We're about creating high quality of life for more than, more than people ever more so. We began construction of a canal park and its boat ramps. And at the same time, we are building a badly needed traffic circle where Floresta Drive connects to South Bend. There were a series of job fairs held at the Civic Center, leading to the hiring of more than 1,000 people by various local companies. And by now you know that Martin Health System's new hospital and tradition is providing a value services to us on the west side of town while employing hundreds of people. Already, the hospital officials are talking about expanding, and they have just been there six months. We appointed a very experienced city manager in 2013, and he promoted two very knowledgeable assistant city managers from within, ensuring that the people who know the city best are contributing their talents. In other words, we have great people in positions now and we are ready for any challenges. As a result, our employees feel more confident about their career paths and the services they provide to our city. We created a much needed abandoned property registration program helping to protect neighborhoods from irresponsible property owners. We opened a widely popular dog park and lots of people and their dogs are very happy about that. There are just a few of our most recent success stories and they are great news for our city. You can be sure that this council and I are very optimistic about all that's happened this past year and about the, the many good things ahead. But to be fair, I also have to tell you what some of our concerns are because we still have a lot of work to do to ensure our future. I hope you'll be willing to do your part to solve some of our problems and support the efforts we're making. Our biggest obstacle right now comes as a result of two problematic financial situations. The one people talk about the most in the financial threat we are facing because of Tradition Studios, which is a building formerly known as Digital Domain. Several years ago, a former city council made a decision to invest money to attract Digital Domain as a high-paying employer. The city built a great place for the company, but they, were, they went bankrupt. So now we have to pay the mortgage on the property. We are trying to sell the place, but it's been difficult, and it costs us $3.4 million a year in debt and maintenance. We will be paying the mortgage until 2031 if we can't find the buyer. Even if it sells, we will continue to owe millions of dollars that will have to be paid. But at least we can reconstruct the debt and lower the payments. 
If we don't sell it, we need to suspend a lot of money remodeling and retrofitting the building for other purposes. So this is something we are trying hard to resolve. But for all the financial trouble we're facing from digital domain, there is another problem that's even more significant. We also are very concerned about the future of the city center and the lack of development there. Just to be clear, when I say city center, I am referring to the property surrounding the civic center, not the civic center itself. Sometimes people confuse the two, but the, the city-owned civic center continues to provide great value to our quality of life in Port St. Lucie. Before the Great Recession hit in 2008, the city wanted to create a downtown, so former city council invested a lot of money in the city center development. The landover, the landover in the city center went bankrupt, so the financial concern is that the city will be responsible for the payments missed by him and the city center's new property owner. The annual amount of the assessment on the property is about $2 million, and this is another financial threat we're dealing with. So there are problems, we all know, and we can't ignore them. But again, this year, I want to remind everyone in our community that there is still to be positive about, and many reasons why we need to work together to maximize the value of the assets we have. Again, I'm asking my fellow residents, city council member, and city employees to stay the course and remember that our commitment is to long-term improvement is what we need to ensure Port St. Lucie's bright future. No city is without problems, but our city has the talent on board to find innovative solutions and the various organizations and institutions of our community have a history of working together to move forward. I urge all of you to continue that spirit and I assure you that your city government is well, well intended, well prepared, so I know we can be successful together. I know there's a lot of criticism by some, but there are many residents who are happy with the direction the city is going. So we remain committed to the betterment of this community. Citizens of Port St. Lucie, I am happy to report to you today that the state of our city is strong and promising, and we are committed to overcoming any challenges in our path. I ask you to take a lot of pride in the city of Port St. Lucie. We are the heart of the Treasure Coast. We are the Florida's ninth largest city. We have great people, colorful sunsets, golden opportunities, and an exciting future like no other. So, I, so don't let anyone tell you other. And please feel free to contact my office to talk about any city business, this is important. Whatever is important to you, please let me know. I would like to hear your thoughts and concerns and suggestions. Thank you so much for coming here today and making our city a wonderful place. Thank you again.